Well, welcome to the Design to Manufacturing by Hawkridge Systems. You're in the breakout session for improved performance with optimal hardware and settings. I'll be your host today. My name is Alex Taguchi. A little bit about myself. I've been with Hawkridge Systems for the last 11 years, and I am currently a technical support manager. My team is uh, a bunch of support professionals that a lot of you have interacted with when you call in and you're looking for technical support. And another one of my passions is, is testing laptop and hardware technologies for purchasing decisions for our internal Hawkridge Systems uh, computers. So before we go out and buy a bunch of expensive laptops and desktops for our own engineering staff, I get my hands on it and put it through a battery of tests and benchmark those. Another area of expertise that I've had was testing uh, future technologies like data center and virtual um, environments. So if you have any questions for me, use that question and answer panel over on the right hand side. And I'll do my best to get to those towards the end of the presentation. We also have a chat panel on the right too. So feel free to, to chat with the other participants and the, uh, the other attendees. And we also have a couple of application engineers in the chat helping out with uh, helping out today, including Tim Newton, who's a, a moderator. So thank you. Thanks, everyone. So let me let me get into my presentation here. And then we'll we'll begin. All right. Man, I'm really happy to see so many people showing up for a presentation on hardware and performance. Talk about processors, graphics cards, SolidWorks settings, a bunch of different stuff. So this is going to be a lot of fun. So uh, just give you a sneak peek about what we're going to be talking about today. Um, you know, there's really three main things that I want to cover, and that is um, the computer that you're using SolidWorks on, right? Let's talk about what we recommend, what we what we test, what SolidWorks tests, what we've seen work, what we've seen doesn't work so well. Then we're going to talk about the um, the operating system because there are some little things about the OS that you can take advantage of that that you might not be already. And then the last thing we're talking going to be talking about, which I think a lot of you might be really interested in, are some some really specific settings, and they're kind of hidden within SolidWorks that. Not everyone's aware of that you might want to turn on and to, that might improve performance with some of your larger assemblies and drawings that you're working on. So, so let's let's dive in. What's the first thing we're going to be talking about? Well, what do we recommend? Well, SolidWorks has used different terminologies over the work over the years. So you're talking about ISV, testing, certified, non-certified, recommended, supported, unsupported. What does all this stuff mean? Well, uh, SolidWorks actually has a hardware lab, and what they do is they get their hands on all of it. You're talking about laptops, desktops, graphics cards, processors, everything. And they actually put SolidWorks through a battery of tests. And when it meets their certain criteria and passes their certain criteria, it makes their recommended list or their certified list. So they really that's what they're doing is what that means. And so um, when I use the terms certified or recommended, it all means about the same thing. So um, what is what is recommended right now? Well, the first thing I need to get out, uh, out of the way is operating system, right? We're talking about you need a Windows 10 Pro 64-bit OS. Windows 7 met its end of its life back in January of 2020. So if you are planning on installing 2021, which just launched uh, yesterday, then you will need to have a Windows 10 machine to install it. So what else? What else is important, right? You know, when I when I'm thinking about uh, recommending or buying a computer or specking out a new computer to get the best bang for my buck, where should I be spending my money, right? Should I be thinking about processor, graphics card, RAM, storage? Like, what are those different components, and how do those impact my use of SolidWorks? Well, <clears throat> the first thing that I, I would always recommend starting to think about is processor, right? What is what is that? Um, you know the process of that that I would you know look to to purchase or make that recommendation, and and right now the the main thing that I can recommend is an Intel i9 10900K or i9 9900K. As for desktop processors, if you're looking at mobile uh, notebooks, it's the i9 10885H and i7 
10 8, 8, 5 h And so I'm going to give you the reason why I'm recommending those specific processors if they're available. Um, the main reason is that when you're working with larger assemblies or parts with long feature trees and you, or you're working with drawings with a lot of sheets and a lot of views, a lot of edges, and you're seeing that Windows circle spinning and spinning and spinning, well, a lot of what you're waiting for is actually um, a, 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 a application, a process to complete, right? And that process, for the most part, is running on one core. So having a bunch of cores on your processor doesn't really gain you all that much for uh, most, the majority of things within SolidWorks. Now, there are some specific scenarios like flow simulation and simulation, especially the nonlinear dynamic simulation stuff. If you're doing a lot of that, then then yeah, having more cores is beneficial. But for the, mo for the majority of users who are doing part design, assemblies, and drawings, then, then having more cores doesn't really give you all that much performance. What matters is how fast a single core can run. And so the processors that I've listed here can get up to 5.3 gigahertz on a single processor. And that is that is very, very, very fast. Um, used to, I mean, to get those speeds before, you would have had to talk about overclocking and um, water cooling and all that type of stuff. But now you can just buy a processor um, that, that can get to those speeds out of the box. So single core performance clock speed is king. Um, the second thing that we 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 talk about is is the is graphics. You know, that's that's actually can be the most expensive component of your of your computer build. So what should you buy? What should you have? Well, the, at the minimum, you need a professional class graphics card. And that means an Nvidia Quadro or an AMD Radeon Pro. And you know what? Where should you, you know, what 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 price point should you buy a, a, a graphics card? Because you can spend as little as two hundred bucks or five thousand dollars on just the graphics card alone. Um, it kind of depends on how many edges and triangles that you're typically showing on screen, because the graphics card, uh, by and large, is is solely responsible for the panning, zooming, and rotation speed and frames per second that you're seeing in the graphics area, um, including parts, assemblies, and drawings. So, um, what 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 really? Uh, so, if you have large assemblies, ten thousand, twenty thousand, fifty thousand components, that's a lot of edges. You're talking about tr millions or billions of triangles being displayed. So, yeah, the graphics card you may need to you need to made to bump up to like a Quadro RTX four thousand or five thousand if you want to see a smooth pan zoom and rotational performance. Now. Which one do we recommend between AMD and NVIDIA? Um, either one passes the SOLIDWORKS certification recommended list. The only uh, asterisk I would add to that is that NVIDIA Quadro is technology is the only graphics card that is fully, fully compatible with SOLIDWORKS Visualize. So if you're using that ray tracing photo rendering add-in, um, then, then you would want to go with NVIDIA Quadro based card. Um, and that'll guarantee, and, and, and with Visualize, uh, the higher performance quadro you get, the faster those renderings will be. It's a, it's a direct correlation there. So what's next? RAM, right? Um, RAM is, is the, the, the temporary storage that all your files get loaded into when you load it off your disk. And the minimum recommended right now is 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now, RAM is cheap. So if you feel like you, ha you need more, buy more. You know, 32 or 64 gigabytes of RAM. It's not a not a big cost to your overall system build. So, buy as much as you need. If you're working with larger assemblies and larger drawings on a regular basis, then yeah, having more than that is probably recommended. Um, 32, 64, 64 is about as much as anyone would ever need. We hardly ever ever see anyone using assemblies uh, and and running studies and simulations that that exceed or even get close to that that threshold. And the last component is storage. Um, storage really is only going to impact your your I/O, right? Writing and opening files from your disk. So if you are loading from a local C drive, like you've got a Vault View and PDM, or you're working off just a local C folder, then then yeah, the speed at which that it takes to open your files and to save your files and commit those back to disk is going to be determined partly by the SSD speed of your SSD um, or your storage drive. And and right now there's there's really no reason to recommend spinning disk hard drive technology. It's 
basically obsolete now. So SSDs are are it moving forward. And the fastest ones you could possibly get are, are what's called an NVMe drive. So most computers now um, are shipping with NVMe-based SSD drives as the C drive um, by default. And so that is the fastest that you can buy right now and it's what we recommend. So there's another component about buying a computer or building a computer and specking it out. And that is where do you get it from? And so we're not going to recommend any particular brand to go to, but I just want to add a note about what to consider. So, you know, we've all heard of Lenovo and Dell and HP and those big, the big brands, you know, they, they, they cover a lot of, um, a lot of wide spectrum of, of, uh, of, of computers. And you're going to, that's a known quantity. Um, it, now there's, there's an argument to be made about going to a boutique builder like Puget Systems or Box Technologies, and that they build machines almost specifically for solid or specific engineering applications. So you're going to get a, a slightly uh, more tailored experience or may and maybe even a custom experience where you can, you can hand pick a specific processor versus another or versus a motherboard or things like that, and potentially even overclock the processor. And when I mentioned earlier, clock speed is king, that can result in noticeable speed improvements if you end up going with a processor and choosing to overclock it beyond its 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 you know uh, standard speeds. So I do want to make make note of that. Um, there was one other thing I forgot to mention about about processors and I completely glazed over it is AMD um, and and some other options that are out there. So I want to go back just a second to talk about that. So when you're talking about uh, the Intel processors, I'm talking about the i9s and i7s and things like that. You know, traditionally, you know, as of just a, a, a like a year or two ago, almost the standard processors that you would find in any of these workstation class machines were Intel Xeon based processors, and that has that has that has slowly been phased away um, in terms of the, the the reason for that, and and mostly is because of of clock speed, right? Um, Xeon technology uh, processors, those traditional now are focused more on the multi-threaded applications. So if you do have, if you are a heavy flow simulation user, for example, then it might be valuable to look at some of the different Xeons out there that are available because th they can offer many, many more cores and, and that can benefit some of your, your multi-threaded applications. Now, um, the other benefits that Xeon gives you are like ECC RAM and dual socket motherboards, things like that, which really aren't relevant to SolidWorks. So we tend to tend to uh, not really recommend those for the for the most part. Nothing wrong with ECC, but there just isn't really a, a requirement to have that to run SolidWorks effectively without um, and, and get a good performance out of it. The other thing I want to mention about processors, I said AMD, um, there's a lot of hype and there's a lot of marketing about AMD processors, specifically the Ryzen and Threadripper chips. And there's, there's a lot going for them. Now, what we've seen, though, is in all of our benchmarks and what we've seen in third party benchmarks where they compare similarly priced Intel versus similarly priced AMD processors on SolidWorks specifically, Intel processors almost come ahead every single time. There's some very specific scenarios where they don't, and that's where multi-core matters. So those non-linear dynamics and flow simulation studies, yeah, you get more cores with AMD processors, but you get less clock speed. So there's, if you, if for the most part, Intel chips are the ones we, we tend to recommend. And then the last bit about that AMD is that if you were to go to Lenovo, HP, and Dell, there isn't a single machine that they offer right now that offers an AMD-based CPU. So you, you're likely to end up with an Intel chip anyways. So <clears throat> let's move on uh, to, to software. So <clears throat> let's take a look here. So what else, where else can you gain speed, right? Now that we've covered hardware, you got a good idea about processor RAM, video cards, all that good stuff. Where else can you gain some quick speed without spending any money really? And that is on, on software upgrades. Over the last three years, specifically starting with 2019, I'm going to talk about some stuff they added there. They they introduced something called the new graphics pipeline or enhanced graphics mode. And what that did was it leveraged a newer version of OpenGL technology um, under the hood. So kind of like a new graphics engine, if you want to think about it that way, where it allowed them to then 
harness the technology that's available in newer modern age graphics cards. So beforehand, before 2019, they were kind of handicapped by the the the, the graphical engine that they were they, they were deploying. In 2019, in parts and assembly specifically, they got a giant boost by upgrading to the new graphics engine, especially if you had higher end graphics cards. Then moving into 2020, they added some other um, graphical improvements, such as expanding that new graphics mode to drawings. So now we get to see the same benefits and parts assemblies in drawings. And then we also get to see um, some improvements kind of under the hood in terms of PDM background search improvements. So for those of you working across multi-site um, PDM replicated environments, there's they did some, some gray work in terms of just search and query and index performance. And they also did some things regarding the large assembly load times as well, too. So those are some quick, quick upgrades that you can gain some software speed. And then most recently, um, with the 2021 SP0 launch, there's there's actually been some significant improvements in terms of graphical improvements. So I want to touch on some of these real quick because these are worth noting. Um, the first being is GPU-based occlusion culling. And really what that means is, is it, it's a fancy way of saying that the camera orientation within your SOLIDWORKS, um, your parts and assemblies model view, is only going to render and calculate what is being visible to that camera view. So if something is being hidden by another component or it's outside of the camera view, then it's not going to be calculated. And therefore the overhead on your graphics card is significantly reduced, allowing it to perform faster for what is just being displayed. Um, and it's instant. There isn't any delay in terms of zooming out and then or making components transparent and waiting for things to load. It's it's seamless. So this is and it's on by default. Um, I don't think there's a way to turn that on. It just it just it just happens in 2021. The other is silhouette edges. So a lot of times when you're working on um, uh, a component that has you know patterns, hundreds or thousands of patterns, and you've got a lot of edges, um, a lot of those being silhouette edges. Well, it was previous to 2021 calculated by the CPU all those silhouette edges. And so a lot of time when you're waiting for your file to load and you've got that last little bit where it says generating graphics and you're just sitting there waiting for the thing to circle, you're just waiting for the CPU to finish calculating all those all those silhouette edges. Well, they've now offloaded that to the GPU, which is much faster and efficient at doing that. You've also got some more drawing improvements on top of what they introduced in 2020 in terms of being able to leverage the GPU to calculate drawing views. And then the other thing that they did, which which I've noticed personally, is especially with larger assemblies, when you have many, many configurations, there were a lot of times when you're just switching from one configuration to the other configuration with without really that many being that many changes between the two configurations, it would take five minutes or 10 minutes for it to just kind of sit there and think about just switching configs, which is really just suppressing or unsuppressing components for the most part. And they have essentially, um, they've removed that bottleneck. Um, and so now it's, it's almost instantaneous switching between configurations regardless of, of how large your assembly is. Um, what else did they do? They also improved sheet metal uh, performance too. So if you've got a part file with a whole bunch of um, pattern uh, lances or, or or stamped parts uh, features in it, then then th those flatten much faster rather than having to wait for it to flatten and flatten. Sometimes it would take a little while. And then talking about PDM again, they did some they did further performance improvements in specific to working with large sets of data. Oftentimes when you're doing a check in or a state change or just adding the files to your vault, it might take a while for that 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 load to happen or that check-in process to happen. And what they've done is they've actually um, done a lot of background work and parallel processing on that. So it's much faster in 2021. And then for all you simulation users out there, they've continued to expand all the different on, on further solvers that can take advantage of multi-core processors. So some of the some specific types of simulations have been have been improved in terms of uh, just performance and solve times. So let's, that's pretty simple in terms of uh, in terms of upgrading. It just requires you to install the latest version, and you just automatically gain these these performance improvements. So what else what else do we have here? Well, <clears throat> we've got uh, the operating system. So a lot of what I'm going to be talking about next refer it relates to some of the older systems that you might have. Um, I'm still talking about Windows 10, but let's say you've got hardware from three, four, five years ago and you haven't quite had a chance to upgrade to a newer platform yet, then some of these settings might might apply to you. But the first thing that I can recommend is install the recommended driver from that SOLIDWORKS currently recommends. And so if you've got an NVIDIA 
NVIDIA graphics card, you want the NVIDIA R440 branch. They no longer certify a specific version. Um, they used to do version 441 dot something, something, something. They stopped doing that. So they just they just recommend a general top level branch of driver. So if any of you graphics card driver versions start with 440 something, then it is on the currently recommended branch of drivers. Um, AMD, same thing. They stopped. They they moved away from those little minute version upgrades, and now that now they do kind of quarterly drivers. And so, if you've got an AMD Radeon Pro, then you want to have the 20.Q1. Keep in mind, these are constantly changing as their SolidWorks lab continues to test different hardware and graphics cards and drivers that come out. These these might change, um, you know, throughout the year. So you always want to take a look at the SolidWorks hardware certification website, and they will publish which driver that they have uh, most recently recommended and tested and passed their tests. So what else can you do at the operating system level? Well, this is th there's there's something called system properties. And within system properties, you can disable some of the fancier technologies that Microsoft has pushed into the later versions of, of Windows. So transparent windows and fancy control tab switching and um, and, and different graphical properties that just apply to all applications on top inside Windows. And what you can do is you can actually turn a lot of those fe those features off. Now, what does that do? Well, it, it, it lowers the overhead on your graphics card. So you gain a little bit more computing power from your graphics card. However, you end up making your computer look like Windows NT. So there's a big drawback there. Um, for those of you who like it, then maybe you might want to take a look at these system options. But otherwise, I would generally recommend leaving it as is, unless you've, you're running maybe a five-year-old graphics card still. Um, and then you might gain, gain a little bit of performance. Um, there are, the other thing is, is page file. You know what is page file? It's it's essentially a buffer for your RAM. So if you run out of physical memory, it can commit C drive space to then uh, allow your file, your, your, you know, your SolidWorks to open up larger files or more files. Well, SolidWorks development has informed us that they develop with it set to automatically, automatically managed. And they do not recommend turning it off or setting a manual page file. They, they specifically made those recommendations to us in, in, a, in a recent meeting with their R&D their team. And, and so their own development environment is all set with automatic page file. Now, where are the scenarios where you might want to turn or manually set your page file? Um, and so automatic, I should tell you, is, is dynamic. So it is your um, your load demand increases on your RAM. It will Windows will just allocate more and more and more page file, right? So you'll never run out really. But but there are some scenarios where you might want to manually set that. And in those state, in those situations, you might want to do that. Um, and what it, what, it, what it might do is it might um, prevent the SolidWorks resource monitor from popping up saying you're low on system resources, because sometimes that catches your, your dynamic page file running low before it's allowed to allocate more. And so it pops up saying you're running low on. And really what that's telling you is you probably just need more RAM. So I mentioned earlier, RAM is cheap. Look at investigating and buying some more RAM. That's that's a pretty easy recommendation there. Um, the last thing is is UAC, and this isn't um, kind of an obvious one, but user account control. If you've ever talked to our tech support team, they've probably talked to you about it. And again, this is another thing going back to their SolidWorks developers and what they've told us is that that um, user account control. If you did a search in Windows right now for UAC, you would bring it up, and it's a security mechanism for for your Windows operating system, and really where it should be is the default, which is the third from the bottom setting. We have seen in some just weird scenarios where if you've got it cranked all the way up to the top, it causes strange behavior with SolidWorks. So if you're seeing something and you've kind of done everything you can think of, try going to UAC, just toggling it down one notch to the just to the default. Um, it'll be bolded to let you know that's the default. And then reboot your computer and try again to see if, that, see if the performance uh, improves. The last little bit here on operating system environment is your antivirus. Now, SolidWorks used to uh, do a lot of testing um, on antiviruses. They would they had a list of 12 or 13 different antiviruses that they tested and then said, yes, this passed the test or it didn't pass the test. They have stopped doing that um, a couple years ago. And really, it became too burdensome, really. There's too many variables. There's too many antiviruses out there. And there, those antivirus systems and even definition changes from a day-to-day -day basis can make significant changes to how those antiviruses function within your computing environment. So 
their strong recommendation now is is simply we just work with your IT, find something that meets your IT security policies and, and recommendations, and also see if you can maybe get one or two options and then put SOLIDWORKS through some SOLIDWORKS benchmarks to see if there's you know, a significant impact on performance versus one versus the other before you choose to commit to an antivirus. But a lot of, for a lot of us, our antivirus is already predetermined by our IT group, so we don't get a lot of say on that. But for those of you who are thinking about potentially moving from one antivirus to another, that's, that's their recommendation right now. So, Let's move on to, well, I've got a question here that's about OS, um, about bloatware. A lot of systems, when you buy it off the shelf now, they'll come with a lot of uh, bloatware pre-installed. And for the most part, um, you know, Lenovo, Dell, and HP, they, they load with very little bloatware. Um, we have seen them decrease the amount that's been loaded. So that hasn't been so much of a problem these days. However, if you have competing antiviruses on the same system, that can definitely be a problem, a detriment to your performance. Um, but otherwise, uh, yeah, the, the less the less things you have running behind the scenes, then sure, you can turn those off to your task manager pretty easily under the startup tab. So here are some screenshots of how you get to those visual properties, right? So if you go into your system properties and then you click on the performance settings, that's where you can get to that visual properties. If you set it to adjust for best performance, it's going to make your system look like Windows NT, um, but you might gain a little bit of, of overhead there. Uh, for, for setting your page file, same area, system properties, but click on um, uh, the advanced, go to performance options, and then you can uncheck automatically manage and then manually set. Um, you can even move it to a different drive. If you have a faster drive than your C drive, you could point it to a, a D drive or an E drive that might be a, a faster drive, which might gain you some performance gains there. But often your C drive is going to be the fastest fastest drive in your system and, and generally should be. Um, but like I said, for the most part, we recommend leaving it at, at automatic um, uh, for, for, for the majority of users. And then here's a screenshot of what the default UAC setting is set to, which you might want to work with your IT before you change and change this option because it might be a violation of, of their own group policy security settings. So what's next? Well, SolidWorks is next, right? SolidWorks comes with a lot of settings. You, we're talking about hundreds of settings that you can potentially change. And some of them can have direct impact on the performance that you get within SOLIDWORKS. So we're going to take a look at some of those. Um, actually, most of these that I've, I've found are, are going to be the ones that, that are going to have the largest impact for the most of you. So the default settings. You know, SOLIDWORKS, when we tell people to run in a, a safe mode, it loads SOLIDWORKS in a set of default settings. But those, and when you launch SOLIDWORKS the first time, it's going to try and load in those default settings. But those aren't always the best, um, or at least they don't think of performance um, as the most important element when you're when it's considered when developers set those settings. So what are some of those settings that you can change to maybe gain a little bit of performance? Well, one of those ones that's a little bit um, you know uh, obscure is internet connectivity. Now, if your machine is on the internet, like most of us, if you're air gap, this doesn't apply to you. But for the most of us, when you launch SOLIDWORKS, it's actually querying an RSS feed and gathering data about tech alerts and um, other, other latest news and releases about SOLIDWORKS behind the scenes and displays it on that welcome dialog. Now, if you turn off the welcome dialog, it is still going to query for those latest news and feeds and updates. The other two areas where it'll actually search is the SOLIDWORKS forum. So by default, the forum is set to start up every single time you launch SOLIDWORKS. You can turn that off. Just go to tools add-ins and go to the forum and uncheck the startup button. That actually is another one of those elements where it's going to the out to the internet checking. And then the last one, which actually has the what I've found to be the, the, the largest impact, is its ability to search through 3D Content Central. Now, uh, for the most part, I've seen people are browsing to 3D Content Central, downloading things manually, and then putting it into their assemblies, and not necessarily searching directly through the SOLIDWORKS interface. So you can turn that functionality off. Um, it's, and I'll show you where those where those screenshots here. Um, the main one I've, I'm showing here is how to show off those tech alerts and how to search for um, solutions when SolidWorks crashes. Um, 
The other option to turn off 3D Content Central is here. It's under System Options, and then click on the Search subcategory on the left-hand side, and you just uncheck Include 3D Content Central Results. And I'm talking about searching through that upper right-hand uh, search box within your, your SolidWorks interface. That's where this is going to do that, that searching. What else can you turn off? Well, SolidWorks does a lot of updating. When you open up an assembly, when you open up a derived part, when you open up a drawing, it's going to always try and reference the latest if possible, right? If anything has changed, it's going to give you that kind of dirty flag that things need to be rebuilt. So it's going to try and load those. Um, you know, sometimes it'll prompt if it wants to load and rebuild. Well, if you're working with large assemblies that take a while to open or large drawings, well, you you could turn a lot of that auto updating off. So the first is to just on the drawings front, because we do tend to see a lot of those those performance in, uh, issues with larger drawings. You could just turn off auto updating when opening drawings. And that's under tools options, under drawings, and then performance. Um, this is a newer setting, or they moved this menu around in 2020, so it might look different if you've got an older version. But just check, mark that box. Uh, or uncheck that box, allow auto update when opening drawings. The option right above that is, is uh, again, specific to when you're working with uh, on an older computer um, and not 2021 because we got so much graphics improvements in the latest version that when you click and drag a view around, sometimes there would be this delay because it's trying to show you a live preview of what that view is going to be. If you just don't want that that delay, you can just uncheck that box to show contents while dragging. What other updates can you can you disable? Well, there's uh, which I think most of you have heard of if you've attended the, some of the assembly um, breakout sessions from from earlier uh, in the in the in the day. When you launch a large assembly, um, larger than 500 components, well, by default, it's going to go into this large assembly mode, right? And it's going to turn on and turn off some things. And one of the things that it doesn't turn off is automatic rebuild. And and so what you can do is you can just turn that off, right? So suspend automatic rebuild. Now keep in mind, you know, when you turn this on, what that prevents happening is if you edit a part and switch back to your assembly, it's not going to automatically update. So you're going to have to manually hit Control Q or Control B to to see those changes. But it can speed up your workflow if you're doing a lot of changes, go to part, go to drawing type of a thing. The other thing that I wanted to mention about this in 2021 specifically, um, I know everyone has seen this when you edit a part. And you have a, a draw, your assembly open, and then you close the part, and you say, "Do you want to keep or discard changes made to the assembly?" Well, before, if even if you click discard, the switch back to the assembly could take a little while, longer than it should if it's just discarding changes that were just in RAM. Now it's it's almost instant. Um, they've they've made a lot of background improvements to to that delay. So now <laughs> there's in so much of a penalty for making changes and discarding them when you're working on uh, when you have a lot of parts and assemblies open at the same time. So sub note there. Here's a here's a big area um, that I want to talk about in terms of graphics settings. Um, there's a lot of kind of misinformation about what these settings do and what they don't do. Well, the first thing that I want everyone to do is make sure that they open up this setting, which is under system options, and then go to go to the performance section. The very last option at the bottom is called enhanced graphics performance. That is that new graphics engine. So you can choose to not use it and revert back to the old graphical engine. The only reason why you would ever want to do that is for troubleshooting purposes or if you're running on a very old computer. But for the most part, you want that option on to get the benefits of 2020 and 2019, 2020, and 2021 graphical improvements, which will leverage the new OpenGL uh, 4.5 based technology. Um, so turn that on. The other thing that I want everyone to, that, to do is take that level of detail slider and slide it all the way to the left to off. And what that level of detail slider is doing is it's, it, it is meant for older systems and older, slower graphics cards. But what it's going to do is it's going to take all of your graphical triangles. Let's say you've got a million triangles displayed that made up all, make up your assembly. It's going to reduce those down to simpler blocks. So that way, it can maintain a smooth rotation, rotational performance. So it's going to try and target 30 frames per second during a rotate. And so if it this thinks that it can't do 30 FPS, that it'll start reducing the triangles displayed on screen. But what 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 happens now is that there's now a delay for it to calculate what that reduction is going to be and, and then also trying to resolve it back to high quality. And now with newer modern graphics cards like the Quadro RTX card and the Quadro P series cards specifically and, and the T series cards, you don't really need to do that anymore, especially in 2020 and 2021. The performance of those graphics cards is so significantly better 
in the newer version and on these newer hardware that you just don't need that anymore. And it actually can be slower to have this option on. So turn it off. Um, the other thing that that we that we can that that I've seen some people do, and it's a little jarring, is to turn off transitions. So whenever you take two components and you say make coincident, you see this animation of them, you know, coming together. Well, you can set that transition to just be off. And so what happens is they just snap together wherever that mating condition says they're going to be. And the reason why I say it's jarring is that sometimes if you accidentally click on two components, something sometimes flies off in space and you don't see where it went. Well, since there's no transition, you don't know which direction it went. So you're gonna have to zoom back out, figure out where your part is and then drag it or remade it to where you think it's supposed to go. So just just be be aware of that. But it, it is it is faster to do it instantly. So you can kind of move along in your in your assembly modeling faster. And the other thing that um, that I want to mention about just graphics uh, performance is is real view shadows and ambient occlusion. Now, uh, for the most part, I don't know about you guys, I turn all this stuff off. I don't need my model to look shiny and have shadows and be all that pretty when I'm just making a part, right? I, I want I want performance, right? As long as the geometry looks correct, then that's that's really all I care about. And so there's actually a significant amount of overhead added, um, specifically with the shadows mode. So uh, real view does add some, but not all that much, but shadows and shaded mode, tends to drag your graphics card performance down the most out of these three things. And ambient occlusion, it's off by default, but it just throws dirt and shadows on your model to make it a little bit more realistic. Um, but this is where you would turn it off. Just go to your heads up toolbar and uncheck those three options. The last note about graphics is image quality. And if you've ever worked with our tech support, this is one of the very first things that we do when we look at um, a part file that takes a long time to rotate or to load, is we take, or the file size is really large, and like, why is this part file 100 megabytes, right? Well, we always take a look at the document properties for that part. So this is under, once you open up the part, go to system options, document properties, and there's going to be two sliders here, depending on which mode you're operating in, if you're operating in shaded or non-shaded modes. But generally, just the, the, the main recommendation I can make is do not work in the red zone. Um, this slider is not a linear quality slider. It's exponential. So when you get into that red zone, the amount of edges that are being displayed exponentially increases. So yes, your smooth lines are going to look smoother when you move this further to the right, but what it ends up what ends up happening is it adds significant overhead to both your processor and your graphics card. So generally just don't operate in the red zone and everything will be okay. Um, and there's a if, if you're working in wireframe and high quality, it's the same 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 concept applies. Just operate somewhere in the middle there. Um, if you need to crank it up for an image, you know, a screenshot or or a rendering, you know, crank it up temporarily, but just don't don't work with it all, all the way up to the top. Uh, this is another area we can turn off transitions. So um, you can you can disable the transition. So for example, if you hit your space bar and you click top view, ISO, front, or whatever, that it, it actually shows your model moving. You can actually make it so it's instantaneous when it when it switches. And there's a couple other ones that you can set to uh, no transitions, and it's under your system options and it's under the view subcategory. So some other ones that aren't so um, obvious. Well. There's something called lock rotation on Toolbox, and this is something added a few years ago. So when we're talking about larger assemblies that you might have a lot of fasteners and you're using Toolbox, well, when you drag and drop and you do that auto smart mate functionality, it doesn't lock the rotation. They have a, a degree of freedom so they can spin. So if you then add uh, mates to lock that rotation in place, you are now adding additional overhead. So uh, there's an option now that you can just auto lock it so that it doesn't require those additional mates which reduces the top level mate count which is is a great thing for performance in general i recommend turning that on um, the other is reducing the frequency of auto recover so for those of you who are um, experiencing some crashes auto recover can be a good thing right it, it is is basically every 20 minutes it's going to save a copy of whatever open document you have to this temporary folder and and then if you close SolidWorks successfully it, it deletes this it empties this folder well if you've got a really large data set and it takes a while just to save sometimes when you're working with SolidWorks you just all of a sudden it just pauses and starts think stops to think 
it likely is just doing an auto save. So you can decrease that frequency, right? So set it to 30 minutes or 40 minutes or whatever. And so you see that pause a little less frequently and always put this on a C drive. There's no point in putting on a network drive because it, it purges itself um, uh, upon so successful closes anyway. Um, there's a couple other settings that you can do um, in terms of um, don't prompt to save read-only reference documents. I'm not sure why you, you know this prompt even comes up by default, but everyone's seen it when you're working on an assembly and you have some parts open in read-only and you click the save, it still asks you to save these, these read-only documents. You could turn that prompt off. And one of the ones that I want to note here is uncheck that include subfolders. What this can do is it can add a significant delay on just opening parts and assemblies, because what it'll do is it'll uh, recursively search through folders that you might have listed in your file locations and significantly add some delay. So uncheck that, uncheck that box. All right, we're at the 40th minute here. We're just gonna be wrapping up on a, on a few other topics here and I'll try and get to, get to some of these questions because you guys have been sending me in some, some awesome things so far. So how can I diagnose and see uh, how my own system has been performing, right? Uh, how does my computer stack up to what else is out there? Well, the SolidWorks RX has a benchmark built into it. Just open up RX, uh, SolidWorks RX, go to the benchmark tab and click start benchmark. Keep in mind that 2021, they made some significant changes to how the RX benchmark tool runs. You cannot compare your 2021 performance to older versions of SOLIDWORKS. So you'd have to do apples to apples um, uh, if you wanted to get a good comparison. And, and so the other thing you could take a look at is assembly visualization. This is an overlooked tool that I recommend everyone to take a look at. And um, it, what it does is you open up an assembly, you go to tools, performance, assembly visualization. And what it'll do is it'll give you a good idea and color code your graphics too, to show you which components make up the most amount of graphical triangles, which components take the slowest or take the longest to open, and which components take the longest to rebuild. And, and it'll, in, in this example, you know, the color, the, the, the heaviest files would be color coded blue. So it's helpful to identify, okay, maybe I've got the image quality set in the red zone for one of these part files that I might've gotten from a colleague, right? I'm gonna open up that part, turn that image quality down, save it, see if that, see if my performance incre increases. So it's a great little tool. The other is just assembly performance evaluation. This will give you an idea of similar data, but also more importantly, the amount of top level mates you have, and also give you an idea if you have any circular references, which can actually slow down performance. So um, you don't want uh, that scenario to happen. And it'll actually tell you if that, that that is indeed happening in this in this menu. And that's under, again under tools, uh, performance, and just do a performance evaluation once you have an assembly open. And then this is avail also available for parts. So if you've got a really big uh, part file with a long feature tree, 200, 300, 500 features, and you want to know what's taking so long to eat up the most amount of rebuild time, you can take a look at this and see if maybe you can change the order of some features, maybe add fillets further to the bottom of your tree, or um, maybe create simplified configurations and suppress those type of a thing. And then the, the last thing I want to mention here is are, are some resources that I've used in building this presentation or that I use when talking to customers when I say, hey, here's where I would recommend you take a look if you're if you got questions about what we recommend, what SOLIDWORKS recommends, what processors and workstations are out there from Intel that have the latest you know, uh, processors. So Intel actually has a specific website that has a list of all of the certified workstations from different vendors. So you can get a really good um, uh, list of just potential workstations that you can investigate and see what works for you. Um, that's available on that website. And then there's the hardware recommendation or hardware certification website, which again is where SOLIDWORKS releases all of their own internal testing. So every laptop, video card, driver, OS combination that they test and pass will show up on, on, the, on that list. And again, that up, they updated every you know, three to six months. And then again, where we get a lot of our own benchmark data and a lot of reference material, SOLIDWORKS has a benchmark site that has information of, that is uh, uh, provided by users when they perform that RX benchmark and they say, share with others. If, as soon as you click that, it uploads it to this benchmark site and it's got a table and it'll give you a specifics of what processor they had, what graphics card they had, how much RAM they had, and then how you can compare how fast your system compares to, to other computers and other users out there. 
And then the last little bit of information I want to kind of plug is Puget Systems. They they do some of the best benchmarking that's available out there. They're um, unrelated to us uh, completely. Um, and and they what they do is um, they just get the latest CPUs, the latest graphics cards, and they, they've actually even worked with SOLIDWORKS directly to build better custom benchmarks to tell you, okay, yes, this processor is better in these scenarios, but not better in those scenarios. So they do some fantastic benchmarking. So I highly recommend everyone take a look at their blog and content because they do some things specific to SolidWorks and other um, other things related to SolidWorks. So with that, I, I wanted to uh, thank everyone for, for tuning in. It's a lot of data about hardware and performance. And now we've got about 10 minutes left here before we've got a hard stop at, at 2 o'clock. The, vid the video will, well, the session will end. So I'll do my best to try and get to some of these questions here. So let me take a look here on, the, on my q and I've got a whole bunch. Let's see here. Uh, where do you find a 3D content central uh, option? Uh, you turn that off under your system options under search. Let's see, I'm taking a look at some other things here. Here's a good question um, about, about uh, performance when switching configurations. Now, this is that new feature that they added in 2021. And yeah, that, that's a great point. The question is, do you think that the performance improvement in changing configuration reduces the need of display states? Well, that's a, that's a great point because we saw that using display, sp display states to just hide, show, or change appearance data. Um, and not have any actual suppression differences or, or, or part differences, a great way to improve the, the performance because then you could just switch display states rather than switching configurations and waiting. I, I haven't actually tested that exactly to see if it's, if it's comparable, but from what I've seen is that, yeah, when you switch configurations, it is so much faster that there, there might not be a need to have that much of a use of display states now. So that's that's it'll be interesting to test, but I, I would lean towards yeah that that being a true statement. Uh, another good great question about just general hardware about the Quadro RTX 3000 series that launched from SolidWorks. Well, uh, so the latest graphics graphical engine that SolidWorks updated to is OpenGL 4.5. Um, so. Uh, any card that can do OpenGL 4.5, which is most cards nowadays and then for a while, are, are going to be able to take advantage, or SolidWorks is going to be able to take advantage of their, that, that, that graphics card technology. However, the specific cards um, that are that, that the questions are about is called the, the 3080, 3090, and 3070 RTX cards. Those are actually gaming cards. Um, and so those would not be tested by SolidWorks, um, and nor would they be recommended. So until the Quadro RTX versions of those come out and are tested, then then I would say stay away um, because they, they will not be they will not be tested. Let's see. It's a question about PDM managed files. What would be the difference um, in building a standard PC for SolidWorks client versus uh, a file server for PDM, the, the, the system recommendations are going to be very different. What this presentation is all about are the end users, those doing the part modeling and things like that. Uh, a PDM system requirements are, are vastly different. It requires a server OS. It requires um, you know, four or eight cores, doesn't need that much processing speed, and it doesn't really need a graphics card unless you're doing some automated tasks of, of printing to PDF. So there are some, some specifics in there about your PDM uh, server requirements, but they're, nowhere, they're gonna be nowhere near the, the level of performance that you would need on a, on a client end. There's a question about performance in regarding to adding files to Vault and and how that can take some time, especially if you're doing large data sets. Like, say, for example, your business has uh, is working with external vendors and they're providing you with a you know you know large assemblies of motors and 
and things like that or purchase components and you got a lot of items that you need to add to your vault well in 2021 it's not a really a problem anymore so in, in for that specific instance i would say see about creating a test environment for 2021 don't do this in your production create a separate server create a separate client get your snl upgraded and do your testing in 2020 sp0 which is available and see if that performance difference is really noticeable enough to warrant an upgrade to 2021 because i have a feeling that 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 problem that's being asked about is, is a little is, has been resolved or that bottleneck i should say And just to, just to touch on some, the specific graphics cards, um, the Quadro RTX, for the Quadro RTX 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. Those are pretty much the highest end cards that you can get right now that are that are certified and recommended by by SolidWorks. The only reason to go to like to the 6,000, you could go to a 8,000, but you're talking about like a $10,000 graphics card. Uh, the only the only use case for those for for SolidWorks applications is visualize. If you're a heavy visualized user, the then yes, you can significantly improve the 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 the, the rendering time. The, the more expensive graphics card you have or the more CUDA cores amount of RAM that those, 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 those graphics card have. But for the most part, an RTX 4000 is plenty power for, for the vast majority of users. There's a, there's a note about just um, uh, the enhanced graphics mode. Um, be aware that if you're running older version 2019 specifically, there's a little note in there about it being in beta functionality. So if you're um, on 2019 and you're seeing odd performance or if you're seeing any type of stability issues, you may want to turn that off. Um, in 2020 and 2021, that enhanced graphics mode exited beta. It was fully production, so everyone should have that on by default. But then I, I do I do caution that it is a brand new feature, right? And they're trying to jam in the latest harness harness the latest graphics card technology. So there may be some some bumps in the road in terms of some very um, corner case scenarios where you're working with um, you know detailing mode or different things where it, it doesn't play nicely. So as a troubleshooting option, yeah, turning that option off is a good idea just to see if the problem goes away. But for the most part, we've seen we've seen uh, customers have very good success with it. Haven't really seen that, in, that many issues with it. Let's take a look at, uh, at chat here. Yeah, the RTX 4, 4000, around $800. Again, that's it's more expensive than the processor. Um, it can be it can be the most expensive component in your in your computer build. Oh, one other website I wanted to plug before we wrap up here. I'm seeing I'm not seeing too many more questions come in. Is if you're looking at just to to get an idea of what processors are out there and what's compatible, um, everyone should take a look at a website called PCPartPicker.com. Pick a motherboard. It'll filter the list of processors that are compatible with it. Filter the RAM that's compatible with it. It'll give you, if you pick your graphics card, it actually calculates the total wattage of all the components and then recommend certain level of power supplies. So for those of you who are really, really interested in, in building your own system, that's one of the best sites out there for that type of thing.
I'm seeing a note here about a uh, occlusion culling. It is available in 2021. So as long as you have a Quadro, I think it's a K series or newer, I, I'm, it, I'm pretty sure that's the re minimum requirement. Um, GPU based uh, occlusion culling is enabled in 2021. Well, I'm not seeing too many more uh, questions come in, so I think we're going to wrap it up here. Um, one thing I wanted to uh, note here is there is a competition still going on. Um, it's about uh, attending visitor booths or some other uh, gamification point system. Take a look at those those competition rules on the I think the main page here in, in the um, in our conference application here. Um, there's some pretty cool tool, uh, prizes, you know, DJI Phantom or a, a drone and GoPro stuff like that. Again, thanks everyone for for tuning in. It was awesome to see some fantastic questions. People interested about about processors and graphics and hardware and all that fun stuff. I will be uh, putting all of these settings and screenshots together in a in a in a PDF, and so we'll be we'll be put publishing that on our 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 Hawkridge. Uh, help center. So if you're interested in in looking and reviewing this content later, um, take a look at our SolidWorks knowledge base. It'll be labeled like design and manufacturing conference material. So take a look at that. I'll, I think I'll have that up probably next week or something like that. Mm -hmm.